So the program, uh, the um, PG Dip in Bioeconomy with the Business is a collaborative program. So this program was uh, co-developed by UCD, Chagask and MTU. And I suppose we collectively noticed through our work in, in particular in bioeconomy innovation that a lot of the companies that we were talking to around bioeconomy technologies and bioeconomy opportunities and the business models of the bioeconomy were super interested in these areas, but they actually didn't have the team internally that could support, I suppose, the embracing of the new opportunities of sustainability. And we said, you know what, it's going to be really, really hard for us to uh, get these companies to embrace um, new technologies and new opportunities if they don't have the team um, to do it. So we said, you know what, there is definitely a gap in the market for a program like this because there was no program at the time in specifically focusing on bioeconomy in Ireland. So we put our heads together and we said, the most sensible thing to do is to bring together the leading organizations in bioeconomy research and to create the program together because each of our different organizations have different specialisms and we don't need a program, you know, that would be duplicated somewhere else. Let's bring together uh, the best of what we have in Ireland to create a real best in class uh, program. So that ended up being UCD, Chagask and uh, MTU. So as you can see here, I've already introduced myself. I've already introduced Vanula and Marianne. Uh, we also have Professor Nick Holden from UCD, very involved um, in the programme, bringing uh, particular expertise around life cycle assessment. We have um, Professor Maeve Henshin now, I think, um, who is based at Chagas, but is an associate professor at UCD, who's involved in the programme. We have Dr. Gaurav Rajuria from MTU, and we also have other colleagues in UCD. And I think Tom Kern is one of the colleagues that's not mentioned um, in this particular slide that's also very involved. Um, in the program. So you really have, I suppose, a team of experts in the diverse areas in bioeconomy involved in the design and delivery of, um, of the program. So just to give you an overview, so this particular program is a level nine program. So we go right up to master's level um, in this particular program and it's the PG dip that's funded uh, by Springboard. Um, next year, it's going to be delivered from the January until December. So this is a 12 month program. It's a part time program. It's delivered primarily in, in live sessions in the evening. And then there are a variety of, um, of other sessions that are recorded and that can also be accessed during the day that um, make up this uh, particular program. Um, it's delivered using a variety of different ways. So you have the synchronous and the asynchronous content. So that's the recorded and the live content. You have a lot of peer to peer learning. So engaging with, um, with your fellow students on the program place-based learning, action learning, and uh, a lot of workshops and, and case studies. So it's a very, very dynamic program, very practical and rooted in the real world. So we're using lots of, of case studies um, from industry and talking about a lot of technologies um, that are in development within our own universities and within the universities of our partners um, across Europe. And I suppose what's really, really attractive about this particular program is that it's 90% funded um, by Springboard. So Basically, Springboard is an initiative run by the Department of Education, and they particularly fund programs that are high potential or high development areas uh, for supporting industry and, su and for supporting um, economic development. And now, I suppose, with the huge push around sustainability and, and um, the green economy, there is a very, very big demand from industry for our graduates that have this particular bioeconomy uh, with business skill set. And that's why they funded um, this particular uh, program. So it is exceptionally good value uh, for somebody who's uh, looking to participate in um, in upskilling and professional development. Um, so the bioeconomy is a term that was very, very niche uh, not that long ago, and uh, it has become something that's really starting to mainstream. And it's the same with sustainability. It was, you know, a kind of a niche area, you know, five years ago. And in, in the past 12 to 18 months, it has absolutely mainstreamed and become one of the major, I suppose, social, environmental and economic issues that we're all talking about at the moment. The bioeconomy in particular relates to the sustainable production of natural resources. So that's different types of, of biomass. So forestry biomass, marine biomass, agricultural biomass, and also the side streams from, um, from those particular um, sectors. They're sustainable processing and conversion into high value products that can replace fossil based um, products in the market and create this newer sustainable economy that's really based on renewable capital and that can deliver positive impact 
into the societies and into the communities within which we live, create lots of high value jobs and contribute overall to the transition to a more sustainable uh, net zero carbon economy. And we all are very aware of this 2050 target that's, um, you know, um, that's that's there, I suppose, globally. And at the moment, I think we've COP27 going on at the moment. We seem to be having these continuous conversations around climate and sustainability and the bioeconomy and promotion of this part of the economy is a huge part of what can deliver um, this more sustainable future. So as I mentioned, this program is bringing together nat national leaders in bioeconomy innovation, education and industry engagement. And through MTU, UCD and Chagas, you have access to, we bring, I suppose, a huge variety of research and enterprise engagement and projects um, that are really embedded then within the program. So you have Biorbic, which is the National Bioeconomy Research Centre funded by um, SFI. It has over 100 researchers from six universities and a huge like multi-million euro portfolios um, of projects and absolutely world leading experts supporting industry and publishing papers and really pushing forward um, research, innovation and state of the art knowledge in bioeconomy. So it's phenomenal to be, you know, to have the opportunity to participate in a program that can provide you with access to those experts and basically thought leaders in the whole area. And um, you have the Circ Bio Research Group at MTU, which is also embedded uh, within Biorbic. And again, we're a bioeconomy research group. You've projects like the IKC3 project, which is a national uh, platform funded by the HEA around the creation of training programs, skills, and new ways of learning for a climate economy. And you have organizations such as the Circular Bioeconomy Cluster uh, Southwest, which supports um, enterprise development in the bioeconomy. And you have very, very similar activities in Biorbic through their industry uh, engagement. And again, through Chagask, fantastic networks and connections into the agri-food uh, community and also into forestry and the other areas and rural development that Chagask um, encompasses. So really, really fantastic network underpinning um, these um, this particular program. So just very quickly to highlight, and if you go to the Biorbic website or if you go to the Circ Bio website, you'll get lots of information um, around these projects. But we really go along the full value chain. So we go from biomass to the market or from, from producers all the way up to brand owners. We've got projects like Farm Zero C, which Fanula is involved in. And also um, here in MTU, we have research involved in it, which is around progressing transition to a zero carbon farm. We've got projects around food waste, such as efficient food. The InGreen project involves companies like Smurfa Kappa and Barilla, and it's all around converting side streams into high value products. Bio for Africa is bringing biorefinery technologies to Africa to try and stimulate a new uh, rural economy. We've got projects like Agro Bridges around short food, ch food chains, Fan best is focusing on the marine economy and so is spiral g is looking at microalgae and then we've got projects like um bio switch which is all around engaging with brand owners so the likes of alpro the likes of lego and different food companies to say this is what a sustainable food ingredient is or this is what a sustainable packaging solution is this is what you should you know you can bring this into your company and use it to replace the fossil based um, products that you're using and these are all of the marketing usps that you can now bring about your products that will differentiate you um, in the market. And then AgriFine is one of Fanula's projects and that's a really fantastic network, education network um, around creating, um, I suppose, bioeconomy and sustainability professionals of the future as well. So you have just, I suppose, access to a really amazing um, network of, of knowledge uh, when you participate in this particular program. And just very quickly as, as a group, um, we have an extensive um, European and international network of companies, of universities. We're very connected with clusters. We're very connected with um, regional authorities and governments, uh, agencies right across Europe. And that enables us to bring in amazing guest speakers and it enables us to bring in real practical um, case studies that can illustrate to the students that participate in the program, um, you know, bioeconomy developments that are state of the art and that are actual and real and in progress. And as well as accessing this kind of state of the art knowledge, which is not uh, easy to find sometimes when these things are happening on the ground, it also provides fantastic opportunities for you as professionals to expand your network and uh, develop new professional um, contacts right across Europe, which can be very useful to you in next steps in your career, because if you're participating 
in this program, obviously, you're interested in a career in uh, in bioeconomy and in sustainability and in the whole um, climate area. So that's just a general introduction to the program. I'm going to hand over to my colleagues, Marianne and Fanula now, who are going to uh, run through the modules. If you have any questions as we go through any of this information, feel free to pop uh, the questions into the chat and we'll answer we'll answer the questions as we as we go along. So, Marianne, I'll give to you now to talk about the MTU modules. Very good. Thanks, Alina. So um, I suppose uh, my my name is Marianne, Dr. Marianne Hurley. So as part of this program, I'll actually be your program coordinator, just to mind you um, throughout the course and the program, if you do decide to do it. Um, I suppose it's just good to have a good main point of contact uh, to keep things organised. So I'll be organising uh, workshops, assessments and lectures in terms of your workload balance throughout the program, as well as um, keeping the communication between MTU and UCD all flowing good, um, because we all know that we can, it can get quite busy, especially when taking on a part time course like this. So I suppose if you see this, you can see the slide here, there's a there's an awful lot of uh, modules here that I suppose are reiterating what what Helena was mentioning in the in all the companies and industries and knowledge that we've gathered throughout the uh, throughout to make this program I suppose uh, resilient and diverse for the incoming new bioeconomy. So we mentioned a lot about social, economic, and um, social, economic, um, you know, sustainability within within Ireland and within the bioeconomy. And I suppose these modules are there to show these emerging trends going forward. So I suppose some of the modules that would be um, particular to MTU would be the low carbon economy module. Um, this is a very good module. It's directed by uh, Dr. Grove. Um, and he'll be he he brings in a huge amount of guest speakers throughout this throughout the semester. It's a ten. It's one of the largest modules. Um, it's a ten credit module. And assessments included in this would be a workshop, assignments, and a presentation. Um, with this, then you'd be guided through this with your lecturer as well in terms of the amount of knowledge. There's research insight into this as well, so you can actually a lot of this learning will be directed by yourself through a research interest that you might have yourself. Um, another module that's within the uh, MTU is the bio-based value chains, products and markets. So about recreate, about learning about renewable resources, how we can create value chains, how social um, uh, diversity now is, is, I suppose, expecting more uh, renewable or uh, products from um, primary production and where can we um, find these new bioeconomy type models for this. And, and uh, another module then going forward would be the knowledge, innovation and industry. And I suppose it's about collaborating all the different types of industries and how can we create innovative ideas going forward to make a more sustainable lifestyle and connect all the industries together. Um, I suppose the work based learning, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in, in in a minute, but it's one of the most valuable. And I suppose we recently um, curated a survey between the past alumni of the postgraduate diploma. And it was one of the most, um, I suppose, valued and I suppose um, unique parts of this program is that we really collaborate with industry members of the bioeconomy um, experts and we try and we created a module around that. So I suppose we, uh, similar to a work-based or work work-based placement in your undergraduate degree. We do this um, throughout, um, I suppose, this program in order to create an understanding of maybe unknown technologies or industries that could be available to you. Maybe you want to move on in your career. Maybe you want to um, upskill very much so. And this module is very much unique to that and provides a huge opportunity with that. Um, in Within these modules, you'll have, these will be forecasted over three semesters. Um, and I suppose if you wanted to move on and you, you'd, you'd graduate then with a postgraduate uh, degree upon finishing these modules. Then if you wanted to do an additional master's and um, I suppose to add on, that you'd, you'd be allowed to do the research project one and two, and that's just another semester. So four semesters in total. But again, this is very a very flexible course. It's uh, programmed in order to allow for people working full time in order to give um, good flexibility to assessments, lecturing hours, everything's recorded. Um, and while also giving you optimum learning content in order to use for the bioeconomy going forward. 
I'll just ask Fanula then maybe to come in here and talk a little bit about the UCD side, if you'd like. Great, thanks, Marianne. Okay, so my name is Fanula Murphy. Um, I'm the UCD program director. Um, so I'll be your main contact point in UCD. So we have a number of modules here on the side that are de delivered by UCD. And what we do is we take a systems level approach. So we look at the bioeconomy beginning from a high level to see where the feedstocks are to actually fuel the bioeconomy. So you learn about the feedstocks we can cultivate directly for the bioeconomy, but we also look at how to generate value from waste products or co-products that are currently being generated in order to reduce waste and become more sustainable. You learn about ways that they're currently being um, treated, we'll say, so in conventional valorization technologies. So what the status quo is for those um, feedstocks for the bioeconomy. So you'd learn about different waste treatment methods um, and anaerobic digestion there. We look at biorefinery processes and technologies. So that's basically where a lot of our research projects, so we're involved in a number of EU projects, national projects. Helena kindly mentioned some of those earlier on. So that's where we're looking at where the bioeconomy going is going in terms of the future development, the current research and development and future development. So really looking at those novel technologies to generate value from biomass resources. While we're looking at the bioeconomy feedstocks that we need to, in order to, to transition to, we'll say a more sustainable society and remove our reliance on fossil fuels, we need to be aware that we need to do this in a particular way that to ensure that it's sustain, sustainable. So if you think about biofuels, for example, they were thought to be carbon neutral fuels, but when you started to look at the emissions over the life cycle, and you'll learn about this in the life cycle assessment module, they actually, in some cases, can actually emit more greenhouse gases than your conventional um, fossil based petrol and diesel, for example. So we use those quantitative life, life cycle assessment methods to assess our new innovations for the bioeconomy to make sure that they're actually sustainable. And you take that further in the green technologies project. So you learn about um, what exactly makes a technology green. And then the final module then in UCD, um, and this is delivered by Professor Maeve Henshin from Chagas. So she's bringing her experience from Chagas here, um, is on the policy and social aspects of the bioeconomy. So as Helena mentioned earlier on, when we're talking about, you know, low carbon futures, we're talking about developing the bioeconomy we need to consider both the environmental aspects, the economic aspects, but also the social aspects. So we can be developing all of these new products for the bioeconomy, but unless they're accepted by consumers and have shown, unless they're, you know, they need to be have social benefits as well in order to really be taken up on the market. So in that module, you learn about the social aspects of the bioeconomy and how that's really central to developing the bioeconomy, we can't just focus on the technical aspects. We do need to consider consumers, stakeholders, and social acceptance of the bioeconomy. So we very much complement the modules delivered by MTU. We develop the systems level approach to give you the big picture of the bioeconomy. So that's essentially, I suppose, what we're, what we're covering in UCD. That's great, Panula, Marianne, thanks for that. Yeah. That's fun. So I'll just go on and uh, do a little bit around how is this program delivered? Um, and look, this is really important because this program is designed for people who are in the workplace or people who are looking um, to you know, either advance their career within the sector that they're in, or some people are actually looking to make a change. So people can be very passionate around sustainability and say, you know what, I really want to look at some new opportunities um, but in order to look at those and avail of those, I need to upskill um, myself in the whole area of sustainability. And I still need to keep my current job to pay the bills. Um, but I really want to get some new skills and some new knowledge. So when we were um, designing the program, we really, really had the fact that people are busy, people are working and people are juggling lots of things in mind when we were designing how the program would be delivered and how it would be assessed. So just a little bit around the delivery. So we've all kind of touched on it. The delivery is really diverse. So we do combinations of lectures. So that's your traditional class style approach that lots of you will um, already have degrees that you'll have experienced um, previously. So that's delivered online and live and recorded. 
Um, so you don't need to come to the UCD campus or you don't need to come to MTU to engage in those classes. That's absolutely fine. Then we do have a number of workshops, really important for you to get together with your uh, with your classmates. Um, we find people always set, set up what's group, WhatsApp groups, and they've got really good connectivity in that way. And they're used to meeting online, but there's nothing like getting in a room together talking about bioeconomy opportunities and solving bioeconomy challenges. And that's typically what we use the workshops for, is to really dig into um, a technology, a new product development opportunity, a sustainability question, you know, an innovation activity so everybody can work together. And it's amazing the different experiences that are brought into the room because everybody has a background, everybody's coming from a profession or a program, and everyone has a diverse perspective. And we normally end up, you know, coming up with really fantastic ideas um, and solutions in those uh, particular uh, workshops. We have demonstrations. And in that, that means that we bring people from industry in to talk to you specifically around different uh, types of developments and solutions. And then we have tutorials. So we do um, smaller, I suppose, um, group sessions and we have mentors as well. So basically, you know, there's always somebody there available to give you steer, give you direction if you if you feel um, you need a little bit of more support um, in your learning. So the assessment, we have done an awful lot of work as a team to keep the assessment as agile and light as possible, but we also have to deliver level nine um, master's level learn outcomes and learning experience for the students as well. So we give credit for people attending the workshops. We give credit for people attending supervisory sessions. Um, we um, have some reports and case studies. Uh, we have discussion boards where you engage online and in discussion forums. So we use a variety of different methods for assessing the learning and keeping everything as meaningful and light and very conscious as well in terms of how we timetable the assessments that you don't have everything coming together. So you have a very nice and measured distribution of assessments over over the different um, over the different modules. And then um, with regard to the time management. So, yeah, as I've said, um, it's very, very flexible. You've live and recorded content and then you do have the mentor support as well. And look, we're very hopefully I think we're all very reasonable people in this program. We know you're working and that life can be complicated. And we always, you know, for students that are on the program, um, you know, we we support them as much as we can to meet the deadlines. And sometimes it's just not possible for whatever reason to meet a deadline. We will work with you around a new deadline to make sure that you get everything submitted in time and that you can um, you know make your journey out through the program in the uh, in the expected 12 months that you were going to be involved in. So as I mentioned this particular program has three semesters so you have um, start a January start for this particular program starting on the 23rd of January in 2023 and semesters generally tend to be about 12 weeks and it'll run up until April. In that particular semester, you have Fanula's uh, two modules from Fanula. So you have conventional, that's Tom actually is in a Fanula. Tom is conventional valorization technologies. Fanula is biorefinery processes and technologies. MTU is the bio-based value chains and, pro and products. And then you have Nick from UCD as well doing the green technologies project. So a really great semester, lots of diverse inputs in terms of teaching and expertise, lots of different ways of assessing. So this is, you know, a really, really um, interesting semester and you'll understand how you go, you know, the processing, the market opportunities around um, new products and bio-based products and bringing them to market. And then the Green Technologies Project really focuses, as Fanula said, around the sustainability issues relating to particular um, development opportunities within the bioeconomy. And again, diverse um, ways in which that's um, delivered. Semester two then is the summer semester. So this is um, designed keeping in mind that we all like to have a little bit of a different pace of life um, during the summer and engaging in a program is, you know, is a, is a tricky enough thing to do because we normally associate, um, you know, September to April with being in a program. But the way this is designed, um, we think is quite clever. So you have the knowledge, innovation and industry module comes first. That's delivered in four weeks. It kicks off in May. So you have one module. Then that's followed by the bio by the by Maves module, which is a social and um, policy uh, module that's delivered as well in four weeks. And then you have the work based learning, and that's an independent piece of work. So you tip away at that at your own pace. There is no um, lectures really associated with this particular piece of uh, of 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 learning. It's really like it's an innovation sprint, 
It's based around research and development and engaging with companies. And you have one meeting with your supervisor for an hour every second week. And the summer semester really is very, very flexible and you work at your own pace. And we schedule in, you know, where there's two weeks when you're completely off. So you might want to go on holidays or whatever. And we work with the students uh, in this particular semester to make sure that it's uh, as enjoyable as possible. And also keeping in mind that the staff themselves will want to have some time off as well. So um, we work around that. And then module three, will be the transition to the low carbon economy, bioeconomy feedstocks and um, life cycle assessment. And um, again, the diverse ways in which um, the modules are delivered with workshops and um, live and recorded lectures and your mentors. So hopefully you can see from this that the workload is nicely distributed. There's a nice light summer semester and um, that you have really diverse teaching teams and um, delivering content over those semesters so you get really exposure to a wide variety of experts um, during your time. So I just wanted to focus a little bit on uh, the work-based learning. So this is a 10 credit module. So this is a large module. As I said, it's, it's very much an innovation sprint. So what this module is designed to do is to give you design thinking and innovation sprint methodologies that you can use on a variety of different, uh, different projects. And it's basically all around taking a problem unpicking that problem through research, coming up with, which is ideation, coming up with different types of solutions to the problem, picking the highest potential solution, developing that in more detail through the research that you do, working ideally either with a company that we provide um, you with you with. So basically we match you with a company or if you want to work on a challenge from your own workplace, you're more than welcome um, to do that. You have an industry supervisor and you have an academic supervisor and you work for about 12 weeks on uh, on this particular project. So just some examples. Uh, one of the uh, projects that has been given by a company before was um, looking at um, was looking at the development of a sustainable ecotourism project. So they basically wanted to use uh, sustainably use wood products for the development of a carbon neutral tourist attraction and then looking at different, I suppose, um, biodiversity and technology solutions that they could integrate into this particular travel experience and doing some um, uh, life cycle assessment and carbon carbon management mapping um, around that project. So that was really exciting. And uh, that um, is an amazing, um, I suppose, green and sustainable tourism destination. And I don't know if any of you saw, but there was a fantastic report that came out there over the weekend, which called out um, County Kerry as one of the most sustainable um, tourism destinations uh, in the world. So I was delighted uh, to see that. But we would work um, with a lot of um, tourism companies um, in MTU um, around sustainability. So then um, the processing of coffee waste is a real urban challenge with the amount of, I suppose, um, coffee shops that we have and the amount of coffee grounds that are being generated. So there are lots of um, people interested in trying to find ways to repurpose and upcycle and valorize coffee waste. So we had a project around that. We had a short food value chain uh, product project. We had ones, uh, we had a project that was looking in particular around um, plastic um, alternatives. And then we had another project where a company wanted to secure large scale funding for a bioeconomy technology um, development project. So you can see very, very diverse types of projects and a fantastic opportunity uh, to work closely with the companies. So um, who has participated in this program? So we've had this program has been running for two years. We've had three intakes in the program and we've had really diverse um, students in terms of their background to come into the into the program. So we've had people from the food and drinks industry. We've had business owners, so SMEs coming in into the project who are looking at advancing their area in the, in the bioeconomy. We've had people involved in energy looking to transition to more sustainable energy um, solutions and support that development within their company. We've had people from construction, tourism, as I mentioned, and people actually involved in education, teaching and learning that really wanted to, I suppose, create new programs uh, in this particular um, area as well. So really, really diverse. And obviously, we've had a lot of people in from um, environmental and agriculture um, backgrounds. So I think at this point, we have a survey that we'd like to do or a little pop up, um, a little pop up survey. So what we wanted is for uh, participants to just indicate what area of the bioeconomy uh, relates most to your um, current background, because we'd love to know um, where you're coming from. 
um, uh, this evening and uh, I suppose what is kind of gives us an idea as to what has prompted your interest um, in in the program. So, yeah, so great. So we can see people from the food and drinks industry. We have some people in ecology, the marine sector and agriculture um, sector as well. So very typical um, of and we have people from construction, energy, education, SME. So this is really interesting, very close to um, the full kind of uh, profile of students that we've had um, in the past. So I will just move on. I don't think we have any questions in the chat at the moment. So let me see. No, no questions at the moment. Um, is there anything, Fanula or Marianne, that you'd like to add at this point that I haven't covered or that you think is worth mentioning? Thank you. You're going through everything very well. Lena, thanks. Oh, thanks, Fanula. That's great. <laughs> Not fishing for a compliment, guys. Honestly, just just asking if people wanted to uh, add anything. So look, it's always great to hear about previous students because you always think, right, look, the program sounds great. The topics are really interesting. But like, what actually is this going to deliver for me? And how is this actually going to enhance my career and my professional future, because look, that's, you know, the name of the game, uh, really, when you're participating in a program like this, in particular, if you're working during the day, there has to be a significant upside to participating in the program. So um, we're everybody involved in this program is delighted that we've had really, really good outcomes. And the students that have participated in this program that have really done well are the ones that have thrown themselves in. They have made the most of every opportunity that the program gives. It's, you know, it's it's if you're motivated and you're hungry for opportunity, this is the ideal program uh, for you. And I think John Brosnan uh, is a fantastic example of somebody who's really made um, the most of this program. So uh, John had been working in the agri-food area for about 15 years. And John is a clever guy and he had uh, the foresight to go, you know what, I can see that sustainable agriculture is on the cusp of, of, I suppose, of a big explosion in terms of prioritization nationally and in terms of economic opportunity. Uh, John was working, I think, in, in agri-recruitment uh, in particular, but really, really knowledgeable about the um, about the agri-food area and decided he wanted to really deepen uh, and expand his knowledge in the bioeconomy area. So he participated in the program and um, John um, really was a fantastic student. He found, I suppose, the content of the program very, very practical, very, very applied. Um, he really enjoyed the fact that there was Chagas MTU and UCD involved in the program. And John um, was secured a new role once he finished the program. And John went on to do the full masters um, with the Irish Cooperative um, Society, where he's now a bioeconomy executive and he's working with Agri food cooperatives nationally around supporting the cooperative members and the cooperatives to embrace the opportunity of the bioeconomy for driving a more sustainable um, agri-food sector. And uh, John is um, a great um, friend of the program and really is going from strength to strength in his bioeconomy um, career. Now, another person that has been an absolute champion for the bioeconomy program as well is uh, Rob, Rob Lugate. And Rob is here this evening to share some insights with you around his experience on the programme and I suppose how it has helped him to uh, change career paths. So, Rob, I'll just hand over to you. Um, hi, Alina. Thanks for um, giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I suppose I just I don't have much to say, but I just say I came to I came to this course after about 17, 18 years in sales. And I took it as an opportunity to change careers. Like Helena said earlier, I'd, lo I'd long wanted to return to third level education. Um, so I came, I, came, I came to it from wanting to change industry and having an interest in myself in sustainability and the challenges that face our environment. I found the program to be unique um, and, and one of depth and with the possibilities that the, that the developing bioeconomy can deliver to so many sectors in the country. Um, one of the aspects that I've, I've, I've found most interesting and that drove my success was the level of engagement from 
the staff at both UCD and MTU, any problems that you had, any issues that arose, any questions that you had, you always found an answer. They always came back to you. The level of engagement was second to none, especially for somebody who hadn't been in education for a long time like myself. So I found that very good. And from the very first assessment, I found my skills and my knowledge developing. Actually, one of my, my very first assessment was for Fanula's module, I remember. And um, checking back every couple of couple of days to see if my results had been in. So um, yeah, I'll never forget that one. But um, no, and also Helena mentioned earlier the summer module that was very flexible. It went from one module one module to another, and and it did suit the kind of summer lifestyle that um, she was talking about. I went on to um, I went on to do my masters as well um, because I found and to pursue the area of policy and and social aspects of the bioeconomy, and for my thesis I looked at a just transition in um, bioeconomy in agriculture. And um, I, I found a lifelong interest in it, to tell you the truth. And um, again, like Helena said, if you um, throw yourself into it, there is fierce possibilities. So if anybody has any questions in the chat, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks, Rob. No problem. Um, so yeah, so Rob is working with us now in in uh, the Circ Bio Research Group in MTU. So um, yeah, it's kind of come full circle for you, Rob, really, and we're delighted to have you. It's fantastic. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's been great. So just to push on a little bit. So there are two um, really fantastic examples of um, how the bioeconomy program has enabled people to change careers and progress their careers. We've had lots of other different types of outputs from the program. So we've had students come in that have actually set up their own companies. Um, so we've had two startups uh, come out of the of three intakes, which is uh, pretty impressive, uh, to be honest with you, because it's not uh, it's not an easy thing to do to have an idea that's a viable, a high potential idea that can lead to um, setting up of a, of a startup and people have to, I suppose, pin their pin their livelihoods on it as well. So we were really thrilled with that. We had loads of students who I don't know, I think we had 10 plus students who actually once they got to the end of the postgraduate diploma, were so enjoying the program that they went ahead then and committed um, to the master's um, add on the 30 credit add on that uh, Marianne spoke about. We've had students who were working within companies that through their projects and through the modules and through their assignments came up with process improvements. So people in the food industry in particular um, and in the packaging industries that introduced process improvements within their workplaces. And that was fantastic. We've had new service development and um, we've had infrastructure upgrading um, within particular companies. And we've had um, students who have validated market opportunities for companies, either that they've been working for or the companies that they were partnered with uh, in their innovation sprint that have been taken forward. So I hope this kind of shows to you how the knowledge and skills that you get within the program can actually result in real life changes. This is not theoretical. This is skill sets that you can bring in to your job that will enable you to convince your line manager or to convince the executive around investments in sustainable technologies and solutions. And that really places the students as these change agents for sustainability. So you really do get a significant advancement in your ability to speak, articulate, advocate, innovate, design, uh, and convince people around sustainability and bioeconomy type um, opportunities. And I think this is a really nice slide um, that um, can show that. So we were just chatting earlier, actually, before um, we came into this um, webinar and when we were in the in the in the waiting room before we, we set off and we were just talking about how climate careers are now a real thing. Like when we were developing the program, it was around bioeconomy careers and kind of sustainability careers but now there's a whole movement around climate professionals and we were looking at a report from LinkedIn and I think there was something like a 500 fold increase in the number of jobs that um, had sustainability and climate related skill sets called out in the required um, credentials for applying for the particular for the particular post so this is really now starting to permeate 
huge amount of different job roles that would never have considered sustainability to be part of their remit before. So things like sustainability managers, ESG advisors, people in procurement, lifecycle assessment specialists, environmental managers, people involved in sales, people involved in climate action, people involved in biodiversity, marine biologists, and people involved in product development, and people involved in, in sourcing, and people involved in business strategy, um, all now um, see an increasing requirement for sustainability and bioeconomy related um, knowledge. So there are a huge amount um, of opportunities. We might start looking for new jobs ourselves, guys, with the amount of jobs um, that are knocking around here at the moment. And I have actually, in doing research for the for the projects that I'm involved in, some of the sustainability jobs I've looked in have actually been really attractive because they are uh, very, very dynamic careers um, out there at the moment. And there's even this uh, portal called Climate Base, which is kind of like a global portal for climate careers. And it's just really interesting to go in and see the different careers that are available in Europe and in America and in Australia. And they're all aggregated actually through this particular website. So there's lots of really exciting jobs and it shows the global opportunity that sustainability professionals um, actually have. OK, so that's kind of the end of the in the, the course information bit. Right. What's really important now is how do you apply for the program? OK, so as we mentioned, this is a springboard funded program. It's for people who are employed, self-employed or unemployed. Um, and you can secure 90 percent of the total costs of the program. So this program is quite expensive. So it's normally about 5,500, 5,400 euros. But when you avail of Springboard Pro funding, it only costs 540 euros. So there's a huge um, savings and it really is a fantastic um, opportunity. OK, so um, we're more than happy to take questions this evening. You can also contact Marianne directly with any questions around the programme. Fanula, of course, is more than happy to take questions as well at the moment, or Marianne can pass questions on to, uh, on to Fanula. The deadline for applications is the 9th of December. So there's been a huge amount of interest in the programme. I would encourage you to apply as soon as possible. It's based on a first come, first served basis. So, you know, we really would want to get the applications in and you can apply through uh, springboardcourses.ie. Um, you just go in, search for the PG dip in bioeconomy with the business and um, submit um, your, appla your application. So we have a question here uh, from Marco and it says, what are the funding eligibility criteria? So basically, you have to be um, living in Ireland to um, secure the springboard funding. And um, if you are in the workplace, self-employed, or if you are unemployed and um, receiving a, a welfare payment, um, you are eligible for this program. Now, we also have um, application criteria as well around a level eight, so an honours degree um, in business sustainability, science, engineering, or a related area. Okay. So maybe just to reiterate as well that um, we're playing a strong focus on past students. So we mentioned we've had three intakes of students for this program. So we kind of we're fairly good on the running of the of the program now at the moment. So I suppose we just want to make you know you feel free to contact any of us. Um, you know if you think you want to get in contact with the alumni that's there. So we're currently setting up a LinkedIn. Um, I suppose to create more of a networking opportunity from the course as well which is very important because I suppose what we're trying to highlight there is that a lot of this um, you know th these modules and this research is very novel at the moment and very interesting and a, a lot of it is hugely new to all of us at the moment so and and very much changing all the time as well so I suppose it just it just creates a very interesting group of people that are very passionate about what they're doing and going forward. So I suppose um, just to make sure that, you know, maybe, you know, if you're unsure or you don't think you have enough expertise in this um, industry or area, 
um, it's it's very new and novel, and I suppose I I try and highlight that. Uh, really do apply yourself if you are quite passionate about any of it, or you, you do really want to upskill. And you know we're all here to help you out as well, and it makes for a very diverse and interesting bunch within the actual program. So um, I look very much forward to meeting any of you in the in the coming years as well in the coming year. But um, I suppose yeah, if you've any any questions at all, please get on to us, and we can connect you with past students um, as well to get a bit of experience experience maybe in terms of where um you know we've already heard from Robert there as well in terms of how flexible the workload is um and again I suppose how inspiring or how interesting it actually can be as well going forward for your career so um yeah do you have any final words at all Fanula or yeah so I just yeah as Marianne said there um you know I wouldn't be intimidated by the course or anything like that um you do come into it and you learn a lot, but we are there to help um, and to guide you along through the process as well. And um, if you feel that you don't have the background for it, you know, that's maybe not necessarily the case. Just um, as Marianne said, please go ahead and apply. And if you do want to check anything, you can email me, you can email Marianne. We're very happy to, to answer any questions on it. So um, we're hoping, I suppose, as many people as possible on the webinar today join and hopefully we'll see you in January. That's great. So that's 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 all we have for this evening. Um, this webinar will be available on the YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll also um, circulate it to the link um, to everybody who has participated and registered for this evening's session. And uh, look, we'd really encourage you to apply. It's a really exciting program. We do have a great time throughout the year. You make fantastic friendships and um, I suppose you'll be able to get ahead in, in this new area. So as the guy said, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in January. And if you have any questions, please do uh, get in touch. So thanks so much.